this is the uh, third talk um, of the series um, of seven uh, presentations, Archaic Period in Ancient Numismatics, 650, 480 uh, BC. Um, ancient coins are studied in different periods depending on stylistic changes on engraving art and historical uh, events. Um, I want to quote here um, my friend and colleague, Wayne Salis, uh, from his Ancient Coin Collecting uh, book number two. It says, it must be noted that it never occurred to the Greeks or any other ancient civilization that there was an archaic period or a classical period, nor did they think of themselves as a nation, much less citizens of the Hellenic period, Hellenistic period. So um, we have to keep that in mind when we, um, uh, when we study um, ancient history. The, this is the age of symbolism. The archaic period to art historians began earlier, but for numismatists, it may be dated uh, approximately from 650 to 480 BC. Um, what do we see? What do we mean by um, uh, age of sim symbolism? We have animals, mythological creatures, plants, mostly symbols that cities adopted to identify themselves or to identify their coins with. Um, later, they uh, added depictions of God, goddesses, and other deities. So we are going to see a lot of um, symbolism uh, um, on uh, on this uh, in this period. Um, you cannot really separate numismatic um, art um, uh, from uh, um, other um, types of um, art. So um, if you look at the sculpture of that period, um, you can see uh, the parallels um, easily. Uh, they have um, a stiff and rigid appearance uh, similar to that of the Egyptian and uh, the Hittite sculpture. Um, this period marks a transition period between the geometric and um, classical period. Alongside of patterns and abstract forms of the geometric period, a more individualized style was adopted in this period. What do we mean by that? You see here, increasing wealth and a rise in civic pride influenced the um, commissioning of bigger temples, dedications, and graves in this period. Subject matter was expanded toward the end of this period. Direct representation of historical events were rare, but myths were often used in their place. Many features of this period can be traced on ancient coins. And uh, here, the Hittite and Phrygian art pieces for you to compare and how they influence the uh, design of um, certain coins in that period. Again, um, we have this famous um, depiction of um, lion and bull um, confrontation. And it is not something that uh, the um, coin designers uh, of uh, that time, the Lydian um, coin designers, uh, came up with. It was a very well-known um, symbol um, since the um, middle um, Hittite period, uh, 14, 1300 BC, as you see here and then uh, here um, later. And then this one is uh, Phrygian from Gordian, uh, 8th, 7th century uh, BC. Uh, here you see um, two gods, um, a higher level god, and then, and then um, uh, the uh, storm god. Um, the higher level god is actually uh, sitting uh, on a bull, and a storm god is sitting on a crouching uh, lion. So, and then here you have the lion and bull uh, with uh, human um, bodies, uh, again, confronting one another. 
And we have more, of course, uh, mythological uh, figures coming from the Western and um, Eastern um, part of the uh, AG. Griffin is um, a common type that we see on coins. Um, legendary creature with the body of a lion and the head of wing, head and wings of an eagle. So you have um, two uh, majestic animals combined in one creature, um, and 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 it is um, adopted by one of the um, ancient. Um, Polis or Poli um, uh, for their um, identification. And you can see the griffins, um, female headed um, uh, sphinx uh, on, on coins as well. Now, ancient numismatics, the art and science of studying ancient coins, was incorrectly and unfairly associated with coin collecting for many years. This is a very, very um, major um, issue. And uh, for many years, um, ancient coins and the, um, uh, the importance of ancient numismatics um, uh, were um, overlooked by um, um, historians and um, archaeologists. Uh, for uh, centuries, yes, uh, wealthy people collected coins, um, kings and uh, queens and uh, wealthy uh, people collected coins, but um, it's, it would be uh, extremely um, unfair to uh, leave the, um, the, the huge field uh, of ancient numismatics to um, those uh, simple collectors. Uh, they had the money, they were purchasing uh, valuable coins, but um, maybe they were studying them too. But uh, just because um, wealthy people collected ancient coins doesn't necessarily mean that um, it is, um, it should be neglected. Uh, but it, it was neglected for many years. And then um, once it was picked up, um, uh, misconceptions um, uh, came along. So um, when you look at these coins, they're all called Greek coins. So um, I have, I again, quote here um, from um, Jenkins from this ancient Greek coins book. The general tradition of Greek coinage was taken up in antiquity by non-Greek people, by many non-Greek people who came more or less under the spell of Greek culture and adopted their coinage from the same source. Most of this coinage is, by convention, included in the scope of what is called Greek coins. Uh, you can uh, overlook uh, the realities of ancient um, historical facts and, and just agree with him, but uh, it's not true. Many of these people did not come under the spell of Greek culture. It was not the Greek culture, it was the culture of the whole Mediterranean. And attributing it to uh, um, the Greeks uh, would be uh, an extreme uh, unfair treatment of um, other civilizations around the Mediterranean. At least that's how I feel about it. And um, here are some uh, thoughts uh, for everyone. The trading networks of the 14th and 13th century BCE, Eastern Mediterranean were produced by centuries of individual and corporate entrepreneurship, diplomacy, and imperialism that culminated in the linkage of the Mycenaeans, Hittites, um, Cypriots, Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, and smaller polities amongst them. So um, there was a trade. Um, and there was more trade than uh, wars, actually. And the ancient historian interested in studying uh, Mediterranean traders must sail carefully through the ancient literature. First, he or she must put aside modern concepts of supply and demand and embrace a traditional value economy that often sought reward, not in profit, but rather in influence. Really, when you look at the coins, um, you will see um, uh, that uh, they are uh, advertising their individualism, they, their personal being. Uh, so it was the polis and the individual polis that was the most important 
uh, thing at that time. Uh, focusing mostly on wealthy kings and emperors and their gold and glorious wars, we have overlooked fundamental achievements of simple people like sailors, traders, artisans, and farmers. And ancient coins simply um, show us that people also existed uh, together with um, kings and queens and emperors. In this presentation, I'm going to um, show you um, coins from about uh, 60 cities. Um, it is overwhelming. I know um, it is overwhelming, but it is intentional. I want to, um, I want to show you that uh, there is overwhelming material uh, uh, in, uh, to study in ancient numismatics, and, and the coins were not uh, invented and used for military um, campaigns only. Um, I am going to follow um, um, a path that I created uh, for this presentation. So I start from the east. In numismatic um, cataloging uh, traditions, people usually start from the west and they go all the way to the east and make a, a, a turn um, to uh, the south and then make another turn and uh, go back to uh the west uh but i'm just following my own path uh here uh so in uh, asia uh, that's what it used to be uh, called at that time uh there were many cities of course um i didn't put all the uh, cities that minted coinage at that time but most of them um the ionian um, cities were miletus myos Trene, Ephesus, Colophon, Lebedus, Chios, Eritrea, Clozomenea, Smyrna, and Phocaea, and then uh, the islands, Samos, and um, Chios. So these were all um, uh, cities uh, that uh, cherished the individual character uh, of the polis. Um, they had um, absolute um, autonomy and uh, even though they had some common interest um, that would unite them here and there, uh, they never formed a real confederacy like the um, Achaeans or Boetians. Uh, the advice of Talis of Miletus to go to combine in a political union was rejected uh, uh, at that time. And um, they suffered, of course, the consequences. Uh, the, when the Persians came, um, they, um, they had to submit to them, uh, only to revolt uh, in time, but um, uh, their freedom, their autonomy was more important than anything else. So they could not think of uh, being part of um, a, a confederacy or um, a union. Um, the first city that I would like to talk about is um, Ephesus, the city of Heraclitus. Um, I don't know if you um, uh, studied uh, uh, the, the life and legacy of Heraclitus, but I would definitely recommend that you do that. Um, he is famous for the, the, uh, the phrase uh, that I put here, Pantare, it always flows. Um, the river that you uh, bathed uh, a minute ago is gone. Um, you never bathe in the same river twice, he said. So everything changes is um, um, what he was trying to um, say at that time. Uh, he was one of the earliest um, nature scientists, uh, as opposed to uh, philosophers who uh, um, study uh, uh, the the idea uh, of thought, uh, the um, Ionian um, scientists uh, were studying uh, the nature, the universe. Uh, so it's it's really uh, interesting. And at that time, we see the city of Ephesus, um, one of the centers of um, its its time, um, adopting. Um, a bee as their symbol, and as we know, bee is the attribute of um, Artemis, and Artemis was the chief deity of um, the city. 
Um, now you see uh, we have here drums and um, and, and then um, uh, another drum here and then um, an oboe and a hemi oboe and uh, a, a third or fourth um, oboe here. Now from the beginning uh, there is a non uh, denominational system um, as you can see. So these um, you don't only have big coins. Uh, the argument uh, by some scholars and mostly archaeologists is that um, those coins were only um, used for um, uh, military payments. That's not true. These are small change. Yes, they were extremely valuable at that time too. And, um, and uh, yes, they were um, not uh, easy to um, uh, own by everyone. Yet these small denominations, look at these, how small these are. And uh, they were used to facilitate um, com commerce at that time. And then we have uh, Miletus or Miletus, um, um, as some people uh, pronounce it. Uh, it's the um, city of Thales, uh, again, following the path of um, Heraclitus or Heraclitus uh, followed um, Thales' uh, path. Um, uh, the city, uh, thanks to him, uh, was called uh, the birthplace of uh, the modern science. Um, home of Thales, the father of physiology, not philosophy, and his followers, Anaximander and Anaximenes. Uh, Miletus was the intellectual and commercial capital of the ancient world in the century before Athens rose to prominence. And on their coins, you see this roaring um, line in various Forms. And then um, they um, uh, minted very, very small denominations. Again, um, a clear indication that coinage was for mostly commerce, but not only for uh, military campaigns or large payments. Clausomenae is another interesting um, city of Ionia. It's the town of Anaxagoras. He was a member of the Ionian school, uh, a mathematician famed for, for um, um, introducing the spirit of scientific inquiry from Ionia to Athens. So he um, uh, moved to Athens at some point. Um, it is said that he left his wealth and political career because of the fear that they would hinder his search for knowledge. He was imprisoned for claiming that the sun was not a god and that the moon reflected the sun's light. So he had to run from Athens back to um, Asia. And the coins of uh, this city um, usually and uh, depict um, head of uh, ram and uh, for part of winged boar. Um, yes, winged boar is a mythological um, animal and also you have a mythological figure here, Gorgoneon, but actually the city, um, city's chief deity was Apollo and the boar is one of the attributes of Apollo. And um, how about the head of ram? Uh, Ram is um, um, an attribute of Hermes, right? So he's the messenger of gods. He's uh, uh, the oracle of um, Apollo, uh, gives the message to Hermes and Hermes carries it around. There is always a story to tell. There is always this individualism that they have to boast about. Eritrea is another rich, um, town uh, that struck um, Electrum uh, coins early on. Um, the story is that um, Eritros, uh, one of several sons of King Codros of Athens, who were said to have founded cities in Ionia, his city was Eritrea on its coins, and eponymous, um, uh, eponymous uh, hero Eritros is named as its Catistus, the founder as you see here. However, um, there are um, coins that were struck uh, earlier um, in this city. So um, you have a lot of 
stories about um, Greek um, colonists traveling to certain places and uh, colonizing those uh, places, founding cities. Um, it's 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 a um, it's a I, I don't want to call it a lie, but it's not true. Uh, there were cities before the um, Greek so-called Greek colonists uh, arrived, and they were um, um, flourishing uh, towns. They only accepted uh, immigrants, and they didn't mind sharing their uh, land with the with the new immigrants. The um, um, the superiority of the Greeks um, was admittedly uh, their length and um, and their ambition to um, uh, to show it, and that is one of the reasons why uh, many people think that those uh, coins um, are Greek coins, um, uh, whereas actually it's um, um, the um, those coins simply carry uh, the characteristics of each and every individual um, city at that time. Chios um, was um, a city famous for um, its wine um, exportation. Um, the um, Kian amphoras with a characteristic sphinx emblem and a bunch of grape have been found in nearly every country that the Kians traded with uh, from as far away as Gaul, Egypt, and um, Eastern Russia. And on their coins, they have their famous Sphinx and um, uh, an Alphora. And this is the land of Hippocrates. This is a different Hippocrates from uh, that of the um, uh, island uh, coast, the, uh, the um, father of medicine. This gentleman was a merchant, but he was not a good merchant. Uh, he lost um, a lot of money. He was not very successful in his uh, business um, uh, enterprises, but a good mathematician. Um, the reductio ad absurdum, the, the Latin um, uh, term for proof by contradiction, uh, is um, attributed to him. Uh, he was the first to write a systematic organized geometry textbook um, called Stokea Elements. You have uh, Phokaya, a modern uh, focha in Turkey. Uh, the seal was the badge of uh, the city, and a small one normally appears next to the main type to identify the city's coinage. Um, and from early on, you see uh, uh, a seal on the um, coinage of the city. Uh, they didn't only uh, mint um, electrum coins, uh, they also minted uh, uh, silver coins. And as you see, they minted um, coins in many um, denominations to accommodate uh, and facilitate uh, commerce. Uh, there is more, uh, see, uh, Rodas, uh, says the Falkaians were the first people to make long sea voyages, and they discovered the coast of the Adriatic, uh, Terhenia, and Spain. They are best known for having founded the colony of Massalia, modern Marseille, in 600 BC. And look at these um, types. Uh, look at the, uh, the wealth of uh, variety uh, of types. I'm only showing you a handful of um, what, is, um, uh, what is available from this city. Um, and, and why did they have to create so many different types? Because they could. The answer is very simple, because they could. Samos um, is the um, city of the famous mathematician uh, uh, Pythagoras. Um, he was also a philosopher, founder of the mystic, religious, and scientific society called Pythagoreans. Uh, his legacy is um, well known. Um, 
but not many people know uh, his connection to uh, the city of um, Samos. And um, on uh, the obverse uh, and reverse, sometimes we see uh, the scope of a line uh, facing um, an attribute to um, Hercules, of course. Hercules um, killed in the man uh, lion and, um, and, and uh, unskinned it. And, and so um, it must have um, something to do with that. And then uh, there is um, uh, the fore part of the bull here. And then uh, there is um, a winged boar. Uh, so uh, they um, seem to. Um, combine um, mythological um, stories with uh, mythological um, animals and, and, and gods. Just because it is interrelated, I um, uh, put this um, slide here. Zantle, um, uh, in 493, accepts a group of Samian refugees to settle nearby after Samos fell to the Persians. However, the Samians chose to seize the undefeated city itself at the behest of Anaxilas of Region. Afterwards, the Samians betrayed Anaxilas and allied themselves with Hippocrates of Gela. Around 488 BC, Anaxilas suppressed the Samian rulers, seized Sankle, and resettled it with colonists from Peloponnesian Messenia. In honor of their loyalty, Anaxilas renamed the city Messena after their homeland. And you, you see um, the Samian um, uh, influence on the early coinage of this city. And another um, Ionian city um, worth mentioning is Teos. Um, they also chose um, a griffin um, as the um, symbol of their city and minted coinage in um, at least five denominations. And it is the city of Anacreon, um, a lyric poet notable for his drinking songs and hymns. Here is a um, um, poem by um, this uh, uh, poet. I'm not going to read it, um, as my um, reading might not be um, so um, so good. Um, but it's it's um, nice to um, to read uh, poetry from. Um, uh, 2,600 years. And what is interesting um, uh, on this coin that I would like to uh, draw your attention to it is the it, something that they uh, engraver put under, um, uh, under the griffin, and it is identified as human testicles. Um, it might have something to do with uh, fertility, uh, uh, but um, it is something uh, worth um, further study, I guess. Um, also, this place is the birthplace of Apelicon, preserver of Aristotle's works, a famous book collector in the first century BC. His collection included a remarkable old copy of the Iliad. Speaking of um, famous uh, books, um, it's worth mentioning uh, how much we have lost um in uh in, in history uh rather than how uh, how much we have um accomplished um so many books were um burned down so many books um uh, got lost uh and never survived but um love of books we understand that um uh, was always there and people collected books in ancient times as well um, now we are uh, in Iolia and uh, we have Mytilene and um, Lesbos uh, on uh, the island. Uh, Mytilene uh, minted a lot of um, electrum um, coins, again with uh, many different uh, types. It's, it's overwhelming. Um, uh, it's just a small island and you have um, several cities 
minting uh, coinage. And it is the um, um, island of Sappho, uh, the uh, female, um, so-called first female, but I don't think she was the first. I'm sure there were other um, um, poets uh, before her. Um, the bulk of her poetry has been lost, but her reputation is immense. Plato called her the 10th muse, and the rest of the ancient critics agreed at that time. But as a small town, as a small um, island, having um, several cities uh, producing coinage um, is very, very remarkable. Kizikos um, on the Dardanelles uh, is an, another town with um, incredible legacy of um, coinage. Um, again, um, they minted a lot of uh, electrum. Um, I haven't read anything uh, about um, the source of electrum uh, that they um, they uh, used to. Uh, strike coins, but uh, they were very wealthy and they had access to um, precious metals. So um, when I prepared this uh, presentation, um, 240 different designs uh, were noted, but I'm sure by now this number um, uh, increased to 260, 270, if not uh, 300, uh, because it was a, a very uh, important trading post and um, they um, uh, issued many, many coins, including uh, silver ones. And um, again, I emphasize the, uh, uh, the fact that these coins mostly were used in trade, but not to um, um, finance military campaigns. Lamsakos uh, is famous for uh, Priapos, uh, the fertility god. Um, and uh, Pausanias says, this god is worshipped where goats and sheep pasture or there are swarms of bees. But by the people of Lamsakos, he's more revered than any other god, being called by them a son of Dionysus and Aphrodite. Um, earlier coins don't show any depictions of Priapos, but um, I guess the, uh, the mythological uh, story was picked up later, and uh, you see um, a lot of public um, um, depictions uh, on the coinage of this city. Um, Tenedos, from the beginning, um, adopted Zeus and um, Hera's heads, um, Janiform um, heads. And you can see the um, uh, the uh, archaic, uh, uh, rigid uh, designs of uh, the faces uh, on all three um, coins. Apparently, they were struck in different periods within uh, maybe uh, 50 years. Um, uh, you don't need to pay attention to uh, the dates that are given here. They are mostly um, 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 auction catalogers um, um, thinking, I should say. Um, but uh, Lampsacos uh, certainly chose different uh, figures to represent themselves. Um, four part of um, winged horse uh, was their main um, symbol, yet you have Jennifer female had wearing diadem here and then um, uh, had of Athena again in um, late archaic um, style. Um, Knidos um, in Caria was the famous town of um, Aphrodite. And from the beginning, you see that Aphrodite um, uh, is their um, uh, accepted symbol on their uh, coins. Um, one side head of wine, um, their um, uh, allegiance with uh, Miletus, uh, and then on the other side they have um, Aphrodite. This um, uh, uh, sculpture, of course, is later from the 350s by Praxiteles, 
but I just wanted to put it here to emphasize the importance of uh, the cult of um, Aphrodite in this city. And certainly the depictions of Aphrodite um, are all in uh, their archaic style. Um, in certain coins, this one, this one, and this one, uh, Aphrodite seems to um, be looking down. Um, uh, her, um, you know, a little bit uh, shy of her uh, nudeness, um, I guess. But in uh, earlier archaic depictions, she is almost smiling uh, on this coin and on this coin and, uh, and, and this one. So I separated them from the others. There are small messages on each uh, coin, um, uh, if you look uh, and examine them carefully. Alicarnassus, the um, uh, home of one of the seven wonders of the ancient uh, world, uh, was not very productive at the beginning, even though it was um, a very um, a prosperous city. Um, and city of uh, Herodotus, uh, and um, you have um, Milasa, Kaunos, and Kos in um, Caria. Um, again, Kos is a very small town, um, yet uh, they had good doctors, and um, they became famous in ancient times. Uh, Milasa uh, adopted similar a uh, four part of lion um, symbol from uh, Miletus to show uh, their allegiance to that city. And later on, Kanos um, came up with this um, uh, winged female running, looking back type um, that many people confused um, uh, until 20, 30 years ago with Malos uh, types. Um, again, a mythological figure that they came up with. Most, like, most likely it's um, Aphrodite again, but with uh, wings and, and maybe some other deity, I don't know. And um, a, a coin um, for Kos, um, you have the depiction of a crab. Uh, later in uh, the next um, presentation, you will see uh, uh, much nicer, uh, improved um, depictions of uh, crabs on uh, the coinage of the city. But at the beginning, this is what they did. Another uh, strategically important um, island, Rhodes, um, or as we say, as we call it in Turkish, Rhodos and um, in Greek, um, there were Again, several cities that minted coins, um, Camiros, Lindos, Ilsos, um, just a, a, a larger island uh, than Samos and Chios, of course. And uh, it's on the crossroads of um, seafarers. And that's, uh, that's only fair that, you know, uh, they were prosperous and um, a lot of goods uh, were carried and maybe emptied um, in uh, the harbors of the cities uh, from the east and then um, and, and shipped off to the west uh, to, um, uh, to Greece. Um, that's why these cities became very, very prosperous. And there is a, the fig leaf uh, here uh, chosen as, um, as the back of this uh, city. Um, there is, there must be a story behind that, of course, uh, which um, I don't know um, about, but uh, being on the Mediterranean, um, we are going to see uh, other uh, planned uh, depictions on coins of um, some other cities, and then maybe we can combine them and um, come up with um, an idea as to why these people chose these symbols. Then in Lycia, it's it's a very um, uh, unique uh, geographical region and people, um, they um, seem to have uh, chosen a different administrative path than um, other cities. 
um, there were dynasties uh, ruling uh, over um, a certain geographical area, and um, they were happy with that system. In fact, uh, when the United States, uh, before the United States was incorporated, the, um, uh, the founding fathers examined, uh, they say, uh, the, uh, the Lycian uh, dynasties and, um, and wanted to see how they um, uh, ruled, how they governed uh, their land. Um, and they obviously um, didn't favor that idea yet. Um, for uh, for many many years, even during the Roman period, there were only a uh, few cities uh, minted coins uh, in 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 Lycia, and uh, so um, whatever system that they had uh, was favored by uh, the majority of the uh, Lycians, and um, they were happy with that. And as you see, uh, depending on uh, the um, dynasty, they chose different um, symbols uh, on their coins. Phaselis and Patara are um, two um, cities, again, um, part of the uh, dynastic um, rule. And um, they seem to be more productive and, uh, and, and a little um, uh, different path uh, from the uh, from the um, others, uh, even though geographically Facilis was part of Lycia, it minted its own coins that we can identify with the uh, with the city, and um, it's usually prowl of galley uh, on one side, and then um, uh, irregular in Cuscar uh, square uh, on the back. And uh, as time goes by, uh, the prowl becomes uh, more visible. Uh, it's in the form of a boar's head, a uh, very distinctive um, symbol for the city of Facilis. And Patara, uh, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a wonderful um, uh, Roman city uh, right now uh, being excavated. I was there um, two years ago. Um, they have done a great job um, excavating the uh, uh, the amphitheater, um, as you see here, um, and and the other parts of the um, um, city. But as you see, and and when you um, read um, the um, stories about this, again, uh, it's a colony of uh, some Greek um, um, rulers. Uh, this and that, but it is not true actually. Um, the excavators found um, uh, civilization um, in that area uh, dating to much earlier times than uh, before the uh, Greeks arrived. And on the coinage of the city, you have uh, crab and then crab with fishing hook. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It tells us something that um, I don't uh, have any idea uh, about, but uh, it tells us that um, there were uh, individually um, uh, selected uh, symbols for those um, cities. And here is a coin um, uh, from uh, the uh, Lycian or Lycian um, dynasty of Eblai. And you have Cyprus. Um, they um, somehow um, associated themselves with the mythology of um, Hercules or Heracles. And um, early coinage of this um, city um, has a lot of um, um, depictions of um, Heracles. Um, then uh, later, um, the dynast majority of this um, uh, of the coins were um, struck by uh, certain dy um, dynasties at that time, and Rem is um, the symbol of uh, one of them, the Elton. Um, um, I don't know if it has anything to do with Hermes, um, this uh, reclining um, or kneeling uh, Rem, but um, 
it is an interesting um, coin. And uh, the reverse of these are usually blank. Uh, for some reason, um, either they didn't have uh, good um, coin die engravers or they didn't care. Uh, they decided to leave the other side of uh, their early coins blank. Now we are heading um, to the Northeast, uh, Thrace and Macedon. Um, <clears throat> there are so many cities that uh, minted coinage um, in the archaic period, but there, there are also these um, uh, tribes um, that um, never became um, a, a city, but uh, there were known and ident identified with their um, coinage. Oops. And um, I have some cities um, that I would like to talk about in this region, um, uh, in Macedon de Kai. Um, again, their um, symbol or deity or chief deity was um, the hero, um, demigod Hercules or Heracles. Um, you can see the, um, the archaic um, artistic uh, features of the head of um, Hercules wearing lines um, skin headdress. And on the reverse of this coin is an interesting depiction, a cock uh, with a worm in uh, its beads. Um, and it must be um, um, suggesting um, a story of uh, the city at that time. Um, the coinage of Sikion is remarkable um, in that uh, they use one of the first um, regular human um, individual. Um, on this coin, uh, there is um, an, an ident unidentified head of a youth, but when we look at the um, the other issue coming from this city, we easily know who they are talking about. This is Protesilaus. Um, those who read uh, the Iliad uh, by Homer as well uh, easily remember this uh, this individual. He was the leader of the uh, Philakians in the Trojan War. An oracle had uh, prophesied that the, the first Greek to walk on the land after stepping of, ship, of a ship would be the first to die. Uh, after Odysseus tossed his shield ashore and jumped onto it, Protesilaus, with knowledge of the prophecy, fulfilled this. So um, he was a hero uh, of his. Uh, time, and even though it was just a legend, the city uh, adopted this legend, and guess what? They put the name of this person around uh, the uh, uh, around the helmet, so it it reads here. Um, uh, I guess it is um, retrograde. It's from this part. It goes all the way here, Protis allows. Lete uh, is another interesting town, uh, decided to use uh, mythological uh, figures, um, mostly in the form of nude and ethopolic satire and, um, and nymph. Uh, on the coinage of the city, you always have the same um, um, idea. Uh, you have um, um, a satire. Uh, in this case here, it's a um, center or kentaur, um, uh, and, and um, maybe uh, kidnapping um, um, a, a nymph. Uh, here they're in um, dancing uh, form or following the uh, nymph from behind and uh, trying to hold uh, her hand, trying to convince her to go uh, with him, maybe. Here you have the nymph naked um, for the first time sitting, 
Uh, and here you have the kneeling satire uh, with two pellets on uh, each side. Uh, but the, if you look at the faces, the heads, uh, the rendition is um, typical of the archaic period. And one of the earliest uh, depictions of uh, a kingdom um, uh, is um, Macedonian kings, um, Alexander uh, the First uh, minted uh, his coins in uh, starting from the archaic period. Um, some um, art historians or numismatists uh, would like to uh, put these coins in the um, uh, classical period, which I wouldn't disagree. But when I look at the, uh, the rendition of the head, um, I would like to think that this is um, late archaic and early um, classical uh, period. Um, Wayne Salis um, uh, proposed that uh, there were um, coins minted in uh, the classical period um, designed in um, uh, archaic style. And uh, he calls them um, archaizing um, coins, which these coins might be. Uh, but knowing that um, the um, Alexander I ruled from uh, 498 to 454, we can um, maybe squeeze these coins in this um, period. You have these Macedonian tribes that I um, mentioned. Um, these were um, extremely interesting people. Um, they, um, they owned um, some very, very important silver mines. And they mined um, enormous amounts of silver. And they must have finished them uh, before, uh, before the fourth century BC. Uh, and, and they exported those, uh, the, the silver that they, um, uh, they mined. And they created these huge coins. Um, here is um, one that is 33.58 grams, and here is a dodecatron, 39.97 uh, grams. Um, numismatists believe that they used a different uh, weight system. That's why um, they, uh, for instance, a decatron would be 42.5 in the um, Attic uh, weight standard, but here, it's uh, 30, uh, 334 grams uh, is called a decatron. Of course, these names are not uh, the names of those um, coin pieces. Uh, these are rather modern um, names given to those coins, but uh, they were minted in um, different um, denominations, as you see here, uh, 29, 28 grams. Uh, they were mostly um, um, exported uh, or export um, items um, exported in the form of coins. Abdera is a, a, a remarkable city um, on the um, shore of the northern part of the Aegean Sea and its coinage is remarkable with uh, the griffin symbol. And Mende uh, is um, uh, well known for its um, choice of um, uh, ass as the symbol of their city. It's, it is depicted um, in the public as you see uh, most of the time, um, but that's what the city chose to represent themselves. Um, Chersonesis or Chersonesos um, was a, a famous city uh, caught in the um, conflict between the Persians and, and the um, Ionian, uh, Ionian, um, Ionian League. Um, he was actually um, uh, an, an Athenian aristocrat in 515 BC was sent by the Athenian tyrant Hippias 
to rule the Chersonese, um, a strategic point in Athens' grain trade. As tyrant of the Chersonese, Miltiades found himself obliged to submit to Persian rule and served in the campaign of Darius I against the Scythians. His Persian allegiance was short-lived and he joined against Darius in the Ionian revolt. And, and you can see here how he chose uh, the, uh, the uh, types uh, of his coins. Um, he sided with the uh, Miletus and, and, uh, and used the uh, um, roaring uh, line on the head, on the, on the overs of his coin, and then uh, the head of Athena, uh, his allegiance to uh, Athens uh, on the reverse, but the depictions are certainly um, archaic. Here we have the central Greece. Uh, again, um, not all the cities that you see here uh, minted coinage at that time, but quite a few of them did so. Um, Dalfoy is uh, one of the um, uh, prominent um, oracles of the ancient uh, times. And of course, they uh, minted a lot of coins. Uh, this one is really interesting, uh, three drums, uh, 18.55 grams. Uh, they are very rare, but um, uh, there are at least um, several um, uh, examples known. And um, rightfully, they chose the head of um, rams uh, on most of their coins. Um, and, and of course, um, a lyre um, here. Um, Ram is the um, attribute of Hermes. Um, uh, Apollo um, gives prophecies, and um, Hermes carries those prophecies to um, to others. And um, Boeotia is an interesting place. It is the um, uh, it is the city of um, Hesiod, uh, even though he was um, his family came from um, Asia. Um, he was born uh, at Askra near Mount Helicon, uh, the uh, father of didactic poetry. Um, from the beginning, um, it's a league. It's a, it's like uh, Lycians. They had um, their own distinctive administrative system, and um, they um, they adapted um, a shield. Uh, and Boatian shield as the symbol of their city. And as you see, they come in um, at least five different denominations, if not more, and um, a clear indication that uh, they were used to facilitate trade. Uh, Boya is really interesting. Uh, there is um, uh, an inscription found in the city. It is really um, uh, remarkable. At this period, or slightly afterward, Eritrea um, distinguished itself by passing a law which stipulated that a coin had to be kremata dokima ka higai, that is acceptable and good, genuine and not counterfeit. Uh, the stone carrying the inscription was part of the ancient city wall. It is now on the exhibit at the entrance of the museum. It's, it's unbelievable how um, cities uh, took um, coined it seriously at that time, even though we don't have uh, the mention of uh, coins in um, uh, in ancient well in, in terms of names and denominations, uh, but uh, they were very well known. They were very widely used, and there were the issues around um, minting and counterfeiting uh, were well known at that time. Athens uh, is, of course, the focus of uh, many numismatists. Um, the early coinage, um, you still see uh, the, um, the phrase um, or the, uh, the name that catalogers use, weapons, and for the early coinage of um, Athens. Um, although modern scholars have convincingly demonstrated that uh, Seltman um, 
uh, created this uh, hypothesis that weapons and type represent the coats of arms of atoms. Leading families is incorrect. Mismatic catalogers have been hard pressed to find a more suitable designation to describe the circuit. Why do we need to um, uh, stick with that? Why don't we just say um, early Athenian uh, coinage? Why do we have to say um, weapons and or any other name? Uh, it's it's really interesting why people insist on uh, incorrect um, definitions of certain things. Uh, but um, the earlier uh, coinage, as you see, um, has nothing to do with the uh, the uh, the later um, um, designs that we see. Um, and I suspect that some of these coins actually come from nearby um, cities, but not directly from Athens, but that's another discussion. Um, here we um, see the, uh, uh, the clear representation of archaic art um, on these um, silver coins that uh, are famously known as Athenian awls. And they also come in um, many different denominations. Um, like the Macedonian uh, tribes, um, Athens had a very um, um, productive uh, silver mine. And then they used this silver mine um, to um, export uh, silver. It was both a currency and an, an export um, uh, item uh, for the Athenians. And um, they started exporting uh, from early on, and this continued until, um, until um, the Hellenistic period. Aegina was the um, first city that <clears throat> minted um, coinage in the um, western part of the Aegean. And from the beginning, uh, they um, uh, adopted turtle uh, as their symbol. Turtle is um, an attribute of Aphrodite. And uh, this is a sea turtle, of course. And being um, an, an island, it's only normal that this city adopted um, this animal as their symbol. Peloponnesus uh, is another region where you see a lot of cities, um, not all of them, again, uh, minted coinage in the archaic period, but there are um, certain cities that, um, um, uh, that issued coins for many, many years. Um, uh, Corinthia is one of them. Arcadia is another one, and Argolis um, is another one. Um, the um, stylistic uh, features of the archaic period um, uh, are uh, very, very visible uh, on the coinage of uh, these cities. Um, you have the archaic style um, eyes and chins and rigid uh, figures of, um, uh, of deities on the coinage of, this, of these cities. And finally, we are in uh, Italy, and uh, we will visit Sicily um, uh, and Italy, uh, Calabria and Taras. Um, unlike other cities, um, the uh, coin designers uh, in this region came up with some incredibly different um, ideas. Um, here is um, a coin of Taras. Um, on the overs, you have the, um, the regular um, embossed um, figure. And on the reverse, you have the incus of the same figure. Maybe it's not exactly the same figure in the, the incus, but these are very um, uh, specially designed coins. And Minting of these must be extremely um, laborious. Uh, they are very thin, 
and they're not uh, thick points to um, strike um, and, and um, I'm, I'm really curious to, um, to know uh, if there is um, a study as to how these coins were uh, designed and uh, minted. This is not the same uh, type. Uh, it's a, a different, um, um, it's a coin minted uh, with a different uh, method, but um, they have other coins uh, with uh, minted in the same um, technique uh, coming from this uh, city. Lucania is um, a town that um, had the same um, technique, so it must have been known in that area. Um, was it the same uh, mint issuing or producing these coins? Um, uh, one can argue, um, uh, or maybe um, uh, some uh, master engravers uh, and um, uh, coin minting um, artisans uh, came from the same workshop they all learned and they simply spread to um, uh, the region and uh, designed coins for different cities. But you have these very interesting um, coins coming from um, those cities. Uh, Rotium and um, Caolonia, um, uh, here Caolonia did the same thing. Um, the, the figures are absolutely archaic. Um, the, the hair style, the uh, eyes, the nose, the chin, uh, and uh, the rigid figures of um, uh, deities uh, and animals uh, are archaic. And um, again, from um, uh, Brutium uh, Croton, um, they um, uh, adapted uh, the attributes of Apollo uh, in the form of a tripod uh, on the reverse. It's the um, incus of the tripod. And here uh, is uh, uh, an incredible design uh, on the overs, you have a tripod, and on the reverse is in cubes, eagle flying right. Uh, I really would like to know how they minted these coins. In Sicily, um, they had um, some of the best um, artists, and uh, they, um, uh, from uh, archaic period on, uh, they created um, incredible art. Uh, they're going to excel in their um, profession in the classical period, but um, you can see how they developed their um, artistic, um, already uh, extraordinary artistic skills um, early on. Um, Akrakas, Gela, um, were um, two of the prominent uh, cities uh, that employed some very, very skillful um, uh, coin designers and uh, coin die engravers. The, uh, the designs, of course, uh, the symbolism uh, is here, and um, the uh, archaic figures uh, are um, obvious here and also here. And Messana Zankla, we um, spoke about the city uh, earlier, uh, but um, before um, the, uh, the incidents of the, uh, the uh, before the incidents that we mentioned before, um, they uh, had a, a city uh, by the name Zankle. Um, and um, it, it meant sickle, I, I believe, at that time. That's why you have uh, the figure of a sickle uh, on all uh, the coins of the city from that time. Apparently, they had uh, a harbor in the form of a sickle, and that's why uh, they called the um, city um, uh, Zankle, and uh, on the coins, you always see that. And another town with some extraordinary um, 
coins is Naxos, uh, with the um, uh, typical archaic depiction of um, Dionysus uh, on one side and his attribute a bunch of grapes on the other side. Of course, everybody knows Syracuse. Um, uh, they're uh, famous uh, decadrums in the uh, classical period, but as you see, the design um, comes from the archaic period and typical archaic depictions um, uh, of uh, both uh, the obverse and reverse uh, designs. Uh, Salinas um, chose a um, uh, leaf of uh, Selena. So I, I study um, uh, the history of medicine um, for my master's degree, and um, I um, did um, a research on um, um, certain plants um, depicted on coins. Um, of course, the most uh, famous one is silphium. That is going to um, um, come after this one. But um, this one also um, I found during my studies um, as an important um, medicinal uh, plant uh, uh, that was famous at that time. Um, ancient sources say that it, it, it's often, it was often used as an uh, monagogue. Uh, there are herbs uh, which stimulate blood flow in the, the pelvic area and uterus, some stimulant uh, menstruation. Women have used plants such as mugwort, parsley, and ginger to prevent or terminate early pregnancy. Um, of course, they might have been used for other purposes, but for whatever uh, reason, um, the city decided uh, to, um, to adopt uh, this plant as their symbol. And the final slide here uh, on the coins is um, about uh, the um, um, uh, Kiranaika region in uh, Northern uh, Africa. Uh, their symbol is, of course, silphium uh, from the beginning. Um, it's an extinct plant uh, species of the genus Ferula. It was the batch of the province of Kiranaika and its most valuable commodity. The silphium soon became widely sought after due to its contraceptive and aphrodisiac properties. Ancient sources such as Pliny the Elder record its use as a relief for various illnesses, including but not limited to asthma, bronchitis, dropsy, epilepsy, tetanus, vaginal inflammations, and warts. Uh, some of these can be um, exaggerations, um, but um, in light of uh, not having any knowledge about um, about things, um, that you know, plant's whatever, not extinct. Say it again. Uh, that plant about ten or twenty years ago was found not to be extinct. Yes. Well, there are. Um, there are uh, suggestions that um, they uh, they still survive, and um, in uh, uh, in, in um, Lebanon, uh, but uh, no one uh, uh, has proved that it was actually um, silphium. Uh, again, um, under uh, the the. Uh, conditions that we uh, have been uh, going through, uh, you hear a lot of um, comments by so-called experts and doctors uh, about um, COVID-19. One says <laughs> it is such and such, the other one says it is such and such. Uh, if we are to follow uh, their words based on their uh, titles, um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> No one seems to. Uh, uh, <laughs> no one seems to. Um, they don't. They don't come together and um, 
uh, and discuss, I guess. Uh, everyone comes up with an idea and um, they feel that their idea is, uh, uh, is the most correct one and they uh, make it public and um, we hear it and we say, oh, professor such and such said that um, such and such is uh, good. So we accept it. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the educational system in the last um, several uh, centuries simply brainwashed us uh, to believe in what we are told. If someone speaks in, uh, in uh, uh, an author authoritarian way, uh, like me, right at the moment, I'm talking, and, and I appreciate the fact that you all listen to me, but don't take my words as, um, as, as correct all the time. And, and we have to use our uh, reason and logic and um, knowledge to assess the information that we are given and, and use it um, accordingly. And here, this is, uh, this is again the same issue uh, when we studied, I mean, I studied um, at, the, um, um, at the history of medicine and uh, deontology department, um, 15 years ago, um, there were um, scholars uh, talking about Silphium, and um, but um, I think they they stopped talking about it. Uh, they, there were several um, articles published in the International uh, History of Medicine um, Journal, and um, some other people confronted that um, researcher, and he was unable to produce um, a proof of what he claimed to be Silphium. Oh. Anyways, um, if uh, I would be uh, I would be extremely happy and ecstatic if it uh, if it uh, still uh, survives because uh, it would be great. Well, we have a lot of um, plants uh, that have survived over the centuries. Uh, fig trees, we still have them, and uh, we have we still have parsley. Um, uh, we still have other uh, plants. But um, not Silphium, I guess. And one of the depictions here that I would like to draw your attention, um, and many people believe that th these are the, uh, the fruit, and uh, many people believe that the modern um, conception of uh, heart uh, is derived from this symbol. Mm. Okay, I have some um, further reading suggestions here. Um, you're uh, most welcome to um, look at them. Um, there are very interesting um, books to read about the archaic period. They're not all dedicated to that um, time period, but um, you can find um, a lot of um, good information in those books. Then, of course, next time we will get together to talk about the classical period. But before that, if you have any questions, I will be happy to uh, try to answer.